Joining us on the line now is the governor-elect of the great state of Maryland, Larry Hogan, uh, Mr. What governor a, what elect. A fine thing to hear. That's I right. Love yeah, that wonderful. Statement. How are you, sir? Well, good morning. Good morning. It's great to be with you. All right. So listen, I, I like wa- the theme music. By the way, that's <laughs> did, terrific. Did you pick up on that? It, <laughs> yeah. It's, probably most people don't. Be um, <laughs> not everybody remembers that, but uh, the, the theme to good. Hogan's Heroes. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. So listen, uh, we want to talk about the transition. We want to talk about uh, a lot of things, but I want to start because I've been watching the current governor and his administration very closely. And it seems to me that I'm seeing an awful lot of contracts being let, an awful lot of money being spent, and a lot of activity on the part of the current governor in these, his last days in office. Well, it's, uh, we're seeing the same thing, and it's, uh, it's a little bit concerning. I, I don't think I've ever seen this ever happen before with a previous governor, but uh, we've got 50-some days left in his administration, and he's uh, trying to uh, push as many things under the wire as he possibly can on the way out the door uh, and kind of midnight regulations and and contracts and things that uh, increases in fees uh... which uh... i thought they were done with but uh... yeah it's it's unfortunate and we're gonna have to just uh... get in there and and try to uh... see what we can do to uh... review all these things as soon as i am able to take the ring well but contracts once they're let you can't unlet them Yeah. well the contracts have to go through the board of public works and uh... you know i'm confident that uh... you know we can hopefully keep some of those things from happening. But there are a lot of things that he's doing arbitrarily uh, without any input from the legislature, without uh, having the involvement of the Board of Public Works. And he's, uh, it's something we're, we're probably going to be able to review and, and reverse. Are you saying he's an, is he an executive who is acting unilaterally without consultation of the, shocked, uh, huh? the legislative? <laughs> I wonder where well, he got that just idea. Since, just since Election Day, there have been 32 new regulations that he's proposed. And, of course, one of the things I talked about was reducing the amount of regulations, and he's uh, drastically increasing it on the way out the door. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I guess he was uh, counting on uh, Anthony Brown to do that for him. Now he's got to get it done. Uh, Larry Hogan, listen, you've got 56 days until January 21st. That's when you'll uh, be sworn in, and that's when you'll have uh, your first day in office. Between now and then, you've got a lot to take care of and a lot to do on this transition. Uh, what are your priorities right now as you head toward that day? Well, it really is sort of a daunting challenge uh, in a very compacted time frame. You've got to do, I've got to put a cabinet together. I've got to assemble a, a staff in the governor's office. We've got to review, uh, you know, a really arcane budget process that we have, you know, a $40 billion budget that I have to submit to the legislature two days after I'm sworn in. Uh, we've got a, almost a billion dollar shortfall and, uh, you know, tremendous problems with our economy. Uh, so we're, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty daunting challenge, but I'm pulling together the smartest people I can possibly find from uh, the private sector and from government, from both parties, uh, and, and assembling. We have a great transition team we put together, and we're all working really hard. I mean, I may give yeah. them off a couple hours to eat some turkey tomorrow. Yeah. For Thanksgiving, <laughs> Larry Hogan, that, we're going to work straight through. So you just <laughs> said both parties, and, and I bet there's some Republicans who were thrilled to see you win and worked really hard to get you elected who were probably thinking, hold on, why, why does Larry Hogan have to have Democrats on his transition team? What's your thinking there? Well, you know, it's, it's what I've been talking about for years. So I, uh, they shouldn't, it shouldn't come as any surprise to anyone. I built the largest nonpartisan citizen group in state history, 130,000 people, in my group, Change Maryland, half of them are Democrats and independents. Um, you know, I, there are 26 percent of the population in Maryland are Republicans, and I won uh, pretty convincingly. So we probably had as many or more Democratic votes as Republican votes. And my campaign, I said almost every time I opened my mouth uh, that this was not your typical fight between Republicans and Democrats, that it was about Maryland's future. And I said repeatedly I was going to find the best people, regardless of their party affiliation, to help, uh, to help me turn this state around. I know you're trying. You're still trying to put all the, you know, the the, the 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 things together. You're trying to figure things out, put a pencil to paper. But uh, look, that you got that big problem, a budget gap of some six hundred million dollars, and and you have promised to roll back as many taxes as possible. Starting, I believe you said with the rain tax. How Absolutely. can you? How it's going to be tough to do this. Uh, are are you finding ways that you can accomplish the things you hope to accomplish? Well, you know, not everything's going to happen within uh, two days of my taking office or even in the first 90-day session that we have, uh, but we are going to get to work on it, and uh, obviously spending is the major issue. We, we don't have a, 
a revenue problem in Annapolis. We have a spending problem, and uh, we increased spending by 36 percent under the O'Malley administration, $10 billion increase. Um, we're going to have to get our hands wrapped around that problem first, uh, but we're also going to move as quickly and expeditiously as we possibly can on starting to roll back the taxes. But it can't all happen immediately. You know, we have a balanced budget requirement, and uh, we, we can't just eliminate taxes and then not have the money to, to continue the operations of government. So we are going to put some tax relief in our first uh, legislative session, but the real focus <clears throat> initially has got to be uh, cutting spending and trying to figure out a way to run this Maryland state government more efficiently and more cost effectively so we can provide better services at less cost to the taxpayers. Uh, now, do you have big plans for Thanksgiving here? You said you may be uh, working through the holiday. Uh, what's happening in the Hogan household near as your as your last Thanksgiving before taking on the daunting task of running the state? Well, you know, just like probably most of your listeners, we're going to spend some time with family. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to have all of our kids together and my granddaughter. We're going to go down to uh, St. Mary's County where we have family and St. Mary's, uh, they, the, the hors d'oeuvres all afternoon will be oysters, you know, fried oysters, mm. scalded oysters, and raw oysters, and some St. Mary's County stuffed ham uh, <laughs> before you sit down for the turkey dinner. So I think wow. it'll be a lot of eating and, then and turkey. relaxing <laughs> and spending time with family and Dang. being thankful. That sounds right. pretty good. All right, so real, real quick, uh, as we, we run out of time here, I want you to talk about your inauguration. What's it going to be like? Uh, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm so honored, first of all, to, uh, to have gotten the confidence of the people of Maryland and uh, to be serving as the 62nd governor of Maryland. But we're going to have a nice uh, celebration for the people of Maryland. We're going to be inaugurated on the steps of the Capitol. It'll be a little cold on January 21, but uh, it's going to be a nice ceremony. And then we'll have a, an inaugural kind of a people's gala in, uh, in Baltimore a at gala. the Baltimore Arena. I like that. And we're going to try to make it something that you know, the average person can come to rather than uh, just a bunch of fat cats. Uh, listen, I, I don't want this to be awkward, uh, Governor-elect Hogan, uh, but, you know, you're a Larry, I'm a Larry. I feel like I know you now, and uh, I, I just want to remind you, we had that off-air conversation at the Silver Diner in Rockville just days before Mornings on the Mall pushed you over the top and, right. and won you the election. Not that we feel like you owe us anything. I just want to remind you that you did promise to make me the czar of the crab cake during your first term. This is a gubernatorial crab appointment. You make me the crab cake czar. It allows me to go into any restaurant in Maryland and just inspect and make <laughs> sure that they're doing it right. And, and I think, you know, I've got an idea, if you don't mind, can I be the czar of traffic cameras in the state of Maryland? Well, that, you know, you two are probably eminently qualified for those positions. Thank you. Uh, but, you know, one thing I did say to you is I'd love to have you uh, down to Annapolis to do your show sometime. It was terrific doing it at the diner with you. It's a lot more fun. You guys are fun anytime, but it's more fun when we have the crowd screaming in the diner. So, that is uh, but fun. maybe come down yeah. to Annapolis and we'll do it at the State House or in the Governor's mm -hmm. Mansion. I think that's an invitation and we would accept. If there are crab cakes involved, I will be there. <laughs> yeah. I want that czar ship. All right, happy Thanksgiving, Governor-elect Hogan. Governor-elect Larry you, Hogan, thank you for joining us here on Mornings on the Mall.